Pfeiffer here uh, from 1250 AM, The Fan, along with our guy Dwight Albright, of course, of the Spare Time Pro Shop in New Berlin. Phil Brilo, $2 Phil. Follow him on Twitter at Bruce City Bowling. Follow Dwight at Dewey300. Of course, follow me at Sparky Radio. Time to talk about the PBA League. Uh, it is mm-hmm. in the books uh, and a couple hour shows uh, each uh, and every day, Sunday through, what was it, Wednesday, I believe it was. Yep. Um, and got to watch all of them on FS1, which is a lot of fun. They weren't on normal fox will go through i don't know if we're gonna go through like frame by frame game by game we're not gonna do nothing like that it would take forever right um so dwight has like a page of notes i told (laughs) dwight phil that we can because i feel like we never get to all of dwight's notes so i said dwight i'll tell you what (laughs) you can lead the show and we'll go through your (laughs) notes as we go and then if you miss anything phil or i can jump in with what we wanted to add but i told dwight uh that i want to start first uh with something okay and i'm gonna go to you phil because i'm sure you will have the answer. Why does the PBA tour do this so disjointed from the season? That's what I'd like to know. I think part of it is the Fox TV dates. I think Fox looks to kind of move things around a little bit. Uh, I'm sure that's probably what it was this year. Tom Clark would have to obviously be the one to confirm that, but that's my feeling is that it's just a matter of they've got these X number of dates to fill with Fox. Uh, it's no different than upcoming. You know, here's a standalone show during the NFL season with the strike derby. They're not going to have a celebrity uh, tournament this year like they normally do in the past. It's been the Chris Paul or the Jimmy Allen. Uh, so instead of that, that's going to be the strike derby towards the end of October on Fox that they taped at Bayside this last week as well. So I think it's just the, the TV thing. I don't think it's anything other than, uh, hey, Fox goes, hey, we have these dates and this is when we'd like you okay. guys to try to have it. And Charlie and Charlie always works with them. So so this is my thing. And I thought that's what you were going to say. So let me let me counter this here. Why not make this the beginning of the year? Why not start your TV slate with PBA League before you get into your new season? Let this kick off the new season where we haven't seen these guys since last season, whatever the case may be. Um, and that's the first thing that you see. And instead of doing it the way they did it, um, and this was all live, right, Phil? Everything was live as we were watching it for the most part, or was it pre-recorded? Just Tuesday. Tuesday they recorded at four local and it aired at eight Eastern. So, so same day. Right. Yeah, okay. Same day. Yeah. Same day. Okay. So for me now, and, and again, I you know, th- this is all up to Tom Clark and whatever the deal is to negotiate and whatever the windows are that they negotiate. I think I'd rather have the PBA league spread out over four four Sundays on Fox, uh, possibly versus weeknights mm-hmm. on FS1 in September. Now that doesn't mean you can't have another tournament, a King of the Hill tournament, bring that back again or something, right? And right. put that in September instead, and then move this bad boy to the front. The reason that I feel this way, yeah, because I think a lot of people miss this whole thing, and maybe I'm wrong. But when you don't have PBA bowling on week to week and it's the off season, essentially, and you're distracted by everything else going on right now, I don't know if people remember, oh, I better go see if if PBA league is on. You know what I mean? I think you get distracted. But if I kick it off on Fox of, okay, here we go. Week one and it's PBA league. It's your best TV broadcast you have. I don't, you could take any one of your majors. It's not as entertaining as PBA league. It's just not. The best version of what they offer is that right there. It's the most entertaining. If I'm flipping through the channels on six, on Fox six locally here in Milwaukee, like my mom does all the time. That's how she stumbles across bowling. And she sees it and she sees all these people yelling and screaming and all of the the tension and everybody all fired up and Simonelli ready to tear somebody's head off. (laughs) And you're watching that, right? You're like, damn, what is this? This isn't the bowling I know. This is crazy. Look right. at this. And dude's like popping beer, and, you know, <laughs> doing all that stuff. That's the product you want to see to kick off your season, right? right? This so, drives now it's not four nights. Now it's a it's a month. Like yeah. the first month is PBA League, and we do it every Sunday. If you have to pre-record it, like you did the World Series of bowling, pre-record the damn thing. I don't care. The, the there's a minority of your fan base that's going to go on Facebook or a message board and see what's leaked. I don't care about you people. I don't. You want to know the results at a time and you want to go look. That's on you for finding that crap. I don't look, so I don't know. I didn't yeah. know a World Series of Bowling either. Well, I did because I was at World Series of Bowling every year. But right. 
for the most part, I wouldn't go sneaking around and looking. I just think there, there has to be a better way to spot like this. I think it gets lost in the off season. And I think you're missing an opportunity to grab a bunch of new eyeballs that don't watch the product that I think might watch the product. If they see what this looks like, Dwight. So when would you like to see it then? Like start January, the February? Yeah, whenever you're going to start the yep. season. When's the first? Uh, I don't. I haven't seen the schedule. Yep. Does the schedule probably, out for 2024 yet? February, late January, early February again, like it has the past couple of seasons. Right. I'm I mean, so, yeah. so realistically, in January. Right. I don't know who has. I don't even know who has the Super Bowl this year. Is it Fox? Is it NBC? I don't even know. Who uh, has CBS. It. But but see, this is the thing. So when Fox has a Super Bowl, right? Yeah. That's where you would love to see an ad in Fox promoting. The PBA League kicks sure. off our 2024 season, right? And you show highlights to yeah. the crowd going crazy. I mean, my God, there was a person in a banana suit, a hot dog <laughs> suit. I mean, guy wearing a cowboy hat and sunglasses behind him at one point. I mean, it was Phil a... Bryo with glasses on. Right, it was nuts. The, the, <laughs> well, well, I was, your watch is like, what in the world is going on here? And then you had the whole mustache thing going on. Yeah, right with Parker, Parker Bone. Bone. I mean, it Hilarious. was so, so, so good. Yeah. And I just feel like a lot of people well, didn't even know what existed. Isn't that just going to all come out when the ratings come out? Then you'll know for a fact if you were right or not. Yeah, but again, FS1 and regular Fox, you're never you're never going to have as many people on FS1 as you do on Fox. I guarantee right. you. Just like I'm going to take it local here for the Brewers. Do you remember when they used to have games on WMLW? Yeah. Which is the CBS 58 yep. uh, sister station over the air station. I do. And they used to have them on like Sundays. They killed Fox Sports Wisconsin back in the day ratings. Killed yeah. them. One close. Why? Because a lot of people don't have cable. Right, I know it's hard to imagine. A lot of yeah. people still have the over-the-air thing yep. or have their apps but can get over-the-air TV, obviously, besides their apps, right? They have a little antenna in their house for local news or whatever. Yes, so right. you still have that. You're missing so many people. You yep. know what the Phoenix Suns just did? Bally's Sports is going into bankruptcy, essentially. It, it, they're, they're missing payments to teams, whatever else. The Suns last year said, to hell with you, we're done. And it was going to be a whole big court battle. They said, we're done. They yep. cut a deal with an over-the-air station in Phoenix and said, we're going to run our games on this station going forward. Do you know what they just did a couple of weeks ago? They told their fan base in Phoenix, hey, do you want free TV antennas for your house for the window so you can watch our games? You get free TV antennas from us. Nice. You just have to come to the stadium. Or I don't know how they're yeah. doing the giveaway, but they're going to give you free TV antennas so you can watch their games. It yep. costs you zero. Right. That's why over the air TV is the better deal. That's it why is. being a big daddy Fox is such a big deal. And you're not utilizing that for the best thing that you have, in my yeah. opinion. It, that's the best thing. Now, right. again, diehard core fan, the majors are the best, Marky. Okay, fine. I, Yes, that they're awesome, no doubt. But that environment is going to sell more casual viewers to buy in and watch than what the normal environment is. The, the only P like a, go, go ahead, Phil. I was gonna say the only PBA shows that my that my sister watches are the team shows, are the league shows, because the right. energy yeah. and everything. It, it's I so. Guess, I just was gonna say, isn't that a Tom Clark question though? Yes, of course. Yeah, regarding scheduling. Uh, right. Yeah, I agree with you that it should have been spread out. I mean, when you cram them all in back-to-back -back, back nights, A, who's going to be watching it? Again, it was not – none of the shows were on the uh, the TVs at uh, – That's New what I wanted to know. Yeah, New Berlin Bowl. Yeah, they had football on uh, or baseball, um, but n uh, not one PBA show I saw. Um, See, well, that's crazy. Like, I get it. Okay, you want to have the Brewers game on? Fine. Okay, you want to have Monday night football on? Okay. All right. But dude, you got to have it on somewhere. Yes. Like if it's in the bar, it's on. If it's on right. every third TV, it's on. Like yeah. there, you've got to figure out a way to promote the sport that you're trying to make money off of. Like yeah. it doesn't make any sense to me why you wouldn't do it. If you go to a lot of these places, these indoor youth hitting places, yeah. Almost all the time they have TVs on with the Brewers on. Right. Or a baseball game of some sort yeah, is on it's while you're waiting. It's wrong that you have bowling and you don't have bowling on, yes. on TV. Yeah, Makes just, no sense. What is all, so wrong with that? You know, All the proprietors get bowl TV for free. Why can't they dedicate one TV that is constantly replay yes. all the different stuff? in that kind Because of, the shows are on there. You don't have yep. to play qualifying or anything like that where it's just the one camera with the scoreboard behind it. You can replay all the old Fox shows that are sitting on bowl TV and just put those yep. in a loop and just have them play one after the other. You know, I've seen oh, it at Parker Bones yeah. at Parker Bones Rev Rates. They have a thing where it just does a whole bunch of, of yeah. different YouTube videos and it just keeps showing bowling. 
It's one of the most frustrating things for me to see a proprietor not put bowling on at a bowling alley during leagues. Yeah. I know probably Dan Gannant had it on. Uh, he, he's there's a proprietor that gets it, but I mean, we even went to Texas Roadhouse one night for dinner before the tree right. fell, and uh, not one TV had bowling on it. I was ready to ask uh, one of the servers, "Hey, can you flip on just one of the TVs to put bowling?" They on? They would have put it on for you if you yeah. tell them what station it is, providing they know what station it's on. Yeah, this is the other thing here too. Youth bowling, for one second, because my kid's a youth bowler, right? By the way, numbers way up in Oak Creek where he bowls at Classic Good. Lanes. Like, that place is packed on Saturday mornings now. That's great. Um, But having said that, you said the the bowl TV thing, Phil, that you can it can run all the time, essentially, on the TVs, right? Right. Okay. Why, during youth bowling, wouldn't you have bowling on the TVs on a Saturday morning for them to learn who Jason Belmonte is throwing two handed for these younger right. kids to see, you know, the two I'm going to ask when I get there uh, this Saturday, I'm going to ask about uh, whether or not he can do that or not. Maybe he can, maybe he can't. I don't know. I'm going to find out, but I just think it makes a lot of sense because now you can watch on TV guys picking up splits, right? Watching right. the, the, the ball make thing, watching a dude with green spiked That's hair, it. lose his damn <laughs> mind. Yeah. I mean, he's not bowling in the 70s. People like, walk around green spike right. hair going nuts. That dude, and again, he's their home bowler, whatever. But I mean, yeah. that was unbelievable. Yes. Right? So now you got some little kid like, dude, mom, I want my hair like him, man. He's my new favorite guy. But now the kid don't even know the guy exists. Yes. Right. <laughs> pro with the pro, man. It's in Portland, Maine, dude. Yeah. They were in the crowd. Right. I understand that. They're yeah. El Nino or whatever they were ch yeah. chanting yeah. at him. Yep. Yeah. I just, uh so, yeah, okay, there you go. That, that's what I got. Okay, go ahead. Mike. Let's start. One of the things that I read during the week, uh, and um, I Sparky always likes to go to Twitter now, X, is some of the comments from the fans from the show uh, that were actually quite negative, and I wanted to open discussion between the three of us sure. on, are, are these guys right? And, and the comments that I read was that um, – the fan uh, people on Twitter, and I know you know there's a lot of haters out there on Twitter. Like, a lot of negativity like, on Twitter. Right? Just, just look just at like the Facebook. Packer. Look at Packer results <laughs> yeah. last night. On oh Twitter. sure, yeah. exactly. But there's feeling now that the yelling is too loud, that it's staged, that it's not real. They don't like the format. The, you know the format changed from step ladder to the the uh, two uh, game match to yeah. three to five right. type of deal. Yeah. So. Uh, I, Phil, you were out there. That's that's my thought on it. Is you saw it firsthand. Is this getting old? Is it a stage? To me, it looked great. I'll tell you. You know, it's funny. I saw kind of the comments I saw out there from people was that Bayside Bayside seems really quiet this year. I saw that after Sunday's so like Bayside's really quiet. I'm like, uh, hello. Wait till like Tuesday and Wednesday when the Lumberjacks are there. Right. Yeah, they're going to be into it, but they're not going to be into it as much as the home when the home team's there. So I mean, anything's. I mean. Far, nothing staged at all. I mean, I was down in the pit Monday night. Charlie goes, get down in the pit and have some fun and hanging out with the bull pole bowlers. There, there was nothing okay. staged at that place ever. Let, let's talk about staging. Can we talk about staging? Can I pull back the curtain a little bit? Yeah. And PBA, if you get mad at me, I'm sorry. But th this is this is how TV works, folks. If you've never been to a live TV show. Yeah. To a degree, they tell you when to cheer. That's true. Right. Like during the normal shows, right? Back in the day, like World Series of Bowling. Mike Jakubowski yeah, Mike J. would yeah. literally hold class on when these people were to cheer. He would tell, okay, this is this is what we're going to cheer. Yep. When here, this is how we're going to do it. Yep. Okay, everybody, here we go. We're going to live TV, and everybody start cheering. Yay! Yep. Right? And that's how it goes. So from that aspect, yes, you do get coached as far as when you're coming out of commercial break, when you're doing live TV, or even when you're taping, when to start cheering and so forth, and when you can't say a word when they're getting ready to bowl. At Bayside, it's... Dude, just yell your head off for the whole show. Like, I don't gotta, I don't have to teach that. Do you know what helps that? Alcohol. Did you notice <laughs> everybody had drinks? Yeah. yeah. Do you see a lot of people having alcoholic drinks in their hands on a lot of these other shows? No. <laughs> That's the difference. It's right. not coaching, it's alcohol. And God bless it because it works well for what you wanted to accomplish in this mm -hmm. state, in, in this situation. I now again, I don't know who you saw, but I'm gonna make uh, uh, generalization. I'm guessing everybody that said that is over the age of 40. I'm 46, so I'll mm -hmm. say it. I'll be fine. Am I 46? 47. I, it's, yeah, I'm so old. I don't even know how old I am. So, I mean, <laughs> those are the people that I want it back to the way I like bowling. I don't like it this way. I want it normal. I don't like this. Here's the thing don't watch it. 
Right. This isn't the whole season. It's literally four days in the offseason. Now, this is the exact opposite of what I wanted. I want to bring the casual fans in. You're telling me these diehard fans are pissed off about it. Well, then don't watch. It's four days of S1. Go watch something else. Like, you don't have to watch this. Nobody's making you watch it. Yeah. Here, here's the here's, here's the deal for me. You know, going into this tournament, that these fans are a party atmosphere. Yes, you know. So why why even comment on it? Bowling it's, heaven. Yeah. And if you disagree right. with me, you're wrong. Right. That's simple. Right. You're wrong. It's bowling heaven. And I don't know why the PBA league doesn't categorize it as bowling heaven. When you, when you see Field of Dreams, that's pretty much how they lay out Field of Dreams, right? They yeah. the mystery and everything that goes along with it. That place should be categorized nationally as kind of bowling heaven. Who was it that was it wasn't um Norm Duke? Norm Duke said it's my favorite establishment to bowl in in the country. Period. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite place. Like yeah. to me, his own they, bowling ball is on right. Yeah, to there. me, they don't do a good enough job of hyping it up. Like they should promote, hey man, not only is this place rocking here, let's go to the rooftop that they have. Oh, look, here's some video from a wedding that they have. Let everybody see what this place How is all is. about. Yeah. Like you have here. I, I'm going to get real crazy. Okay. Y'all can laugh at me. I'm get real crazy. Destination weddings. Oh, I'm going to go to the Bahamas. I'm going to go to Hawaii. I'm going to get married at Disney world. Right. I want to get married at married in Bowling damn heaven. That's where <laughs> I want to get married. And I don't even know if I can or not because it doesn't get brought up. And then yeah. I'm going to figure out the name of the lanes and everything else and try and go online and figure it all out. I'm telling you, and especially listening to Phil talking about because we Phil, if you missed a couple episodes ago, uh, I had to go online and Google Portland, Maine, because Phil never told us anything about it. So we went on there. <laughs> Not only did they have a, a, a kick, but bowling facility, but it's like a tourist trap with water and hot and, yeah. and high trails. And it's a beautiful town. Right. And, you're missing the boat to yes. not make it the centerpiece of really what it's all about at the end of the day. Yes. And I'll take it a step further. This PBA league thing, I love it. It should the, the Lear should start with the PBA league, kind of like NASCAR starts with an Daytona 500, right? It should start with the PBA league, and the last event of the year should be a major, and it should be there with those fans being stupid. That's how it should start, and that's how it should end. World championship. There you go. PBA yes. world championship. Well, up. whatever, Boom. but make it there with yeah. a lot of money on the line with them going crazy. But now it's singles. It's not team. Yeah. Yeah. And Indy now see what happens. Indy 500 does that. They start at Luna Seca yeah. and they finish at Luna Seca. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It's not like the PBS never done world championship qualifying in one building and had the finals in another. That's all Smallwood did it when he won the title. He did all the qualifying at Thunder Bowl and then he beat West Malat in, in Wichita. Yep. And it was how we roll, baby. So after that. Yeah. Okay. Which I so still go miss ahead. That Sorry, they need to bring that back. Yep. Um, the second part I, a comment I had was Ryan Simonelli's comments. Uh, then now oh, this was one of the first shows, uh, th- that was the stepladder show that he, uh, took being personal, being cut off of the team. Just what, what you, what we thought your comments were on that. I mean, that was, um, pretty serious TV at that point. Chip on the shoulder. Love it. Yeah. You could see the intensity, the anger, just yeah. everything built up in it. And face facts. Yes. I don't know what he's mad about. <laughs> this is this is my thing. Right. This is my thing. Dude, you're not out there. Like you right. haven't been on TV since when? Like I, I don't I get why you're mad because you think all your boys owe it to you for all the years you bowled with them and your friends and everything else, and they should take care of you. Like for instance, uh Ildemaro Ruiz or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, why? We when was the last time he's done anything? I mean, there are certain guys that are involved in this that you're like. I remember him from 10 years ago, but what has he done recently, right? So there's a lot of that that goes on. And in Simonelli's case, look, man, I'm not saying you're not a good bowler. I'm not. But fact of the matter is you haven't been relevant in a while. So what what do you expect from from these guys, right? I mean, I get your guys with some of them. The other thing, I wanted to see Simonelli and Rash. I want to see what that all looked like, right? I was Mm -hmm. curious about that. Him and Rash, those were the last two to shake hands after that match. And it was just a... because I have to quick and they both parted ways. And that was the extent of it. Yeah. Um, and I was like, damn, okay. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. pretty bitter. Uh, and then you get to the, the lumberjacks thing and all the other stuff that was going on. I, I think he made that four days better than it, it could have been. 
because yeah. of the Simonelli storyline. Not only because he was pissed off and intense, but because he was delivering the goods mm-hmm. and shoving it up everybody's butt as he yeah. was doing it. He backed it up. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's what made it so great, Phil. I, you were there, so you really right. were able to feel what was going on. Well, I, and I had a nice chat with Ryan after the show on Monday, and you could just, from talking with him and everything, it's just, he knows what he's done in that building. He understands. He goes, I had one cash all year on tour. Fine. What I've done in this building and my record in this building should be held in this. You know, if there's something happening in this building, you'd be, you know, you'd be stupid to not have me on your team. And he, the Portland thing. Okay. You got the franchise with Troop and Prather and, 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 and Malat and, you know, from, from 2020. And then last year, uh, you know, he bowled really well for the Pounders. He did a great job, and he really thought he was going to be on that court. And then when the Pounders let him go, when Marshall and, and Rash and the rest of them uh, went separate ways, uh, that one he really took personally because he finished jobs when he needed to uh, when the Pounders had a chance in matches in 2022. And that was his drive getting to Portland. Once he got picked, that was his drive. And he, the way they gelled, Parker and Ryan have bowled great together. They've made TV shows in the Roth Holman doubles in the past. Actually, one of the best comebacks I've ever seen from match play uh, in Milwaukee in 2015 to make Roth Holman. So they know each other very well. And then after Snodgrass had that little rough patch starting open open on Sunday and they got through that first match, and that team just gelled. And he was a major part of that as well. It wasn't just the leadership of Parker. It wasn't just Johnny catching a couple of things, watching other teams bowl. And going, hey, let's try this. I mean, you, Johnny, Johnny. Some of these guys you look at and, and you kind of go, okay, what are they actually doing? Johnny was knee deep into what was going on and thinking about what his team needed to do to win. And Ryan was a big part of that as well because it, it was, what do we need to do as a team to win? It wasn't, I have to throw a strike. You have, no, what do we need to uh, do Phil? as a team to uh, win? Phil, Phil your yeah. audio just went. Uh, uh, to the crapper again. I'm not ah, really geez. quite sure what happened. It's all, all right, right, though. So we're going to let Phil go here because we only have like five or six minutes left. We'll just let Phil go. We'll see you next week. Phil Brylo, thank you all so right. much, my friend. Thanks, man. Yep. So there goes Phil Brylo. All right. So, Dwight, you and I will, will finish this up. Go no ahead. Worries. Yeah. Um, the comments that Randy made regarding Sean Rash's back and a, a potential ending. Surgery. Yeah, surgery to end his career. Yep. Um, thought that was pretty serious stuff. Okay. He didn't look healthy either you could tell he was favoring it bad agreed uh so that sucks and we all know i'm not a sean rash guy um that sucks like i i don't even though i don't i'm not a big sean guy that really sucks i feel yes. bad for him man i mean he's yep. got little kids to take care yep. of beautiful wife all wife of works, that right um and now you know i mean like Randy pointed out he's gonna be able to pick up his kids like <laughs> that's how bad it is yes um so that's that's horrible i i feel yep. real bad for him yeah um then Talk about back issues. I thought Wes Malat looked better than the last time I saw right. him on TV. The right. last time that I saw him on TV, he was having a hard time just kind of bending. That was like, in my notes he, too. He looked better. <laughs> I don't know if this is the word. He looked a, a lot more bendy uh, than yes. he did the last time for as big as he is. Yes, I, I saw that also. Um, but yet, uh, Tim Mack, who, my opinion, is a great manager. I mean, he. I mean, you could tell he was really coaching those guys more than some of the other coaches. Some of the other coaches just kind of stand there and just take up room. I mean, Tim Mack is into it. He knows the games. Obviously, he's really good at uh, lane play and getting them lined up. But I, I even heard, because you now, of course, they have a mic. You can hear him talking, that he was even telling Malat what he was doing wrong and why the ball missed right during right. during a shot about his spine angle uh, or being tilted too far forward. So Tim Mack, out of all those managers, I think he is one of the best that are out there. But, yes, Malat definitely looked better. Uh, we're going to try Phil again. Phil, uh, try to get back in a stream yard here to see if it works out. All right, Phil, how do you sound, buddy? How do I sound? You Maybe. sound horrible. All right. See you <laughs> next week, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. There you go. That, that, that's the last try. See you guys. Uh, see you next <laughs> weekend, Phil. Uh, okay. So uh, that, that yeah, the health, the health thing definitely played a part uh, of all of this, too. No question. Yeah. Uh, every one of the teams, in my opinion, and Randy uh, talked about it briefly, was that one of the guys on the team was that X factor of the team, he called yes. it. And uh, obviously, Frank Snodgrass was the one for. Rookie comes in and delivers. Yes, correct. But it just seemed like that was going to be the guy that was going to make a difference in a, a, every one of the matches, that there was that one little weak link uh, of one of the players, and all it takes is one open in, in that format, and you're out. 
Yeah, yeah. Snodgrass was really, really good. He can't when he went. I agree with Randy when he went to that purple hammer. It was a completely different bowler. And you can. The other thing that that kind of stinks is is like when you lose it on that uh, in that show, you really kind of screw your team. Like Prather yes. lost it. Oh, uh, yeah, towards just, it, completely lost it. Then they made the so lineup change. Characteristic for Prather, right? Then you yeah. had a lineup change with Parker Bone. Yep. Uh, because uh, Johnny Petrangelo said, "Well, he lost a shot on both sides." Yes. So I'm making a lineup change, and it did backfire. It didn't work necessarily, but that's the type of stuff. And I remember I questioned really, what do these guys really do? I mean, are we just out there because you know whatever? But they are all seriously kind of in this and yes. coaching, and there is some strategy that that oh, goes yeah. along with it uh, as well. Some and good, some bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is that's some good stuff. I yeah. I, I really. Like I said, I think it was really, really well done. Uh, and then to see the Lumberjacks lose, um, I don't think it was the end of the world either. Yeah, I, I think the two managers were absolutely in the finals were the, probably the best two managers out of the, the teams that yeah. were there and get it the most. Mac and Petraglia, yeah. Man, if, if I was a bowler, a pro bowler, I would love to have Tim Mack as my manager. Yeah. I was so impressed with his knowledge and how he got those guys lined up. And, of course, they got swept in the finals. But, I mean, that other team shot 760 at him. So, I mean, that's 253 average a game. Who's going to beat that? That was just their day. Yeah, no doubt about it. Snickers, you're getting a lot of run, too. How about that? Yeah, right? great. You got a big sponsor, yep. and they get a lot of TV run here, Yep. Uh, which I'm, I'm assuming Tom Clark is happy about. You know, not a thing against everybody else that's involved, but to have Snickers get a little bit more pub to go along with this is a pretty awesome big deal. Throwing candy out into the crowd. And it's interesting because I also noticed a different Randy Peterson on this broadcast. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You're you're a huge Randy guy. I like yeah, Randy. I got great. Guess. There was a lot more screaming and, and getting fired up from Randy Peterson yeah. uh, as well. well. They had him, uh, him and Dave Ryan and... Um, uh, the other gentleman, they had him at a different table, uh, John Fanta. They had him at a different table than normal yep. and, and allowed the fans to stand right behind him. You know, they were turning around, fist pumping him, giving him high fives during during the show. And, and again, getting everyone worked up um, type of deal. I, I, I would think that those announcers love that, too. Love that uh, excitement. You know, that's oh, absolutely. They love yep. it. No doubt. And they were. What did Fanta say? Fanta said something about North Carolina Duke environment or right. something crazy like that. Right. Because uh, he's a huge college basketball right. guy for those people that don't know. A uh, huge college basketball guy uh, on that stage. But I, I really think this is a bucket list thing for people. I mean, if 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 you're a bowling fan, you just have to go experience it. You just you have to. And I, I don't know. And we don't have Phil anymore, but I don't know what the charge to get in or whatever the case may be. I'm guessing it's probably not a ton. Um, cause you try to play to your local crowd. And I wonder how many people come from out of right. state that get tickets, fly in and kind of want to be a part of that thing, uh, over the course of time, because that is an unreal, uh, unreal event. I mean, you've been to many of PBA events. I've yes. been to a ton of PBA tour events and that atmosphere is nothing like either one of us have ever experienced. No, the, the, the ones that are at Bolero the last couple of years, um, I didn't recognize a lot of people. And I know a lot of people in the local area. So when you don't recognize someone, either they're from other parts of the state or out of state, you know, that have come in, drove in, flew in for the show. Right. And so, I mean, I was my daughter and I were two of a couple hundred fans standing on line all the way down to like lane 60 over at Bolero trying to get ready and get in for the shows. So um, it's kind of cool to see that atmosphere where everyone and they're all there to love the game. No one is pushing or shoving. No one's trying to line jump, you know, type of deal. They just are all there because they want to be part of that TV show. It's really cool. It really is crazy. And Randy Peterson gave Tom Clark all the credit for the PBA league thing. and said, this is all Tom Clark's thing. Um, because I think it's when it's st- I think when it started, it was kind of, and I'm I'm guessing the bowlers are like, oh, this is stupid, whatever. Okay, we'll do right. it, whatever, fine. We'll go back to college days and we'll bowl as a team. But what ended up happening was the competitive juices kicked in. Yep. And these guys all love it, and yep. they take it personal when they get cut yep. and when yep. they're not on a team. And yep. Phil told us stories of I forgot who it was, somebody crying when they weren't drafted. And, Andrew a Anderson. Years. Yeah, crying because they weren't drafted a couple of years ago or yep. whatever the case was. That's how important this thing has oh, become. Yeah. Like this is, I don't know if Tom had this as his vision of how big this was going to be, yeah. but this may be even bigger and more of an important deal than even Tom Clark thought it was going to be. Randy Peterson said during one of the shows, this is the only chance for our players to be rock stars. So that was said during one oh, of the shows. So I think right. he's hundred percent correct. And we go back to, and you buried it in September on FS1. Yeah. Like that, 
to me, I'm interested like, to see I, the ratings. I, I, I this don't one. know how the schedule's laid out. I don't yeah. know how Tom decides where what goes where. I'm assuming he's the one deciding what goes where. Yeah. Maybe they're asking him, okay, what are your majors? What do you want to highlight? Okay, these are the best best dates to highlight them. Yeah. But if it's me, I want these these shows on Big Daddy Fox. I want people to see that. To me, that is going to draw the I, casual fan in flipping around. Yeah. They see some dude in a hot dog costume or a girl in a hot dog costume. People screaming and yelling and carrying on while the dudes are bowling. People are going to stop. I promise you. Yeah. So they're going to stop. If they're going through the channels, they'll be like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. What is this? I, I'd love to see the first four Sundays in January. <clears throat> all uh, at the same time. Not, That's not, always a huge complaint. I I always say I don't I don't like shows in January. I want shows when the NFL is done. I don't want to compete gotcha. against the NFL. NFL. I want to stay away from yep. the NFL. Um, so if you're gonna be on Big Daddy Fox, you can't go. Yeah. Then because, because there's the football playoffs. season. Right. Right. So you have to wait for that to be done. So you start in February, uh, and then that's when you make your push, and then you start. You know, February is team, and then your single events start in March. Let's say, and you go right. from there. Fine. Then. Maybe the season gets extended by a couple of weeks or whatever the case may be. And do I have to use my FS1 dates in September or can I use my FS1 dates a little bit earlier and make it a little bit more conjoined? Or maybe they pick strategically to put it in September to keep PBA top of mind in the offseason. I don't know, but those are all questions for Tom Clark. And I wish I Phil was still with us. I would have asked him this question. We still have a couple of shows coming up yet from uh, Portland, Maine, from Bayside. Don't the we? Strike Derby. He Strike referenced. Derby. Right. That's and at the end of L October. LBC. Yeah. I Think Tournament. so, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. which is going to be uh, the one shot and out type of deal, right? Format. So, I still think there's going to be, and those probably are taped and canned. Would yeah, be my they, guess. they, he said, Phil said earlier, mm -hmm. um, that they taped uh, at the beginning of uh, no, there they taped the strike derby show that's going to run at the end of October. They taped it there at Bayside, um, just now when they were there. Phil is desperately trying to get back in. Hold on a second here, let me see what he's got. Uh, da, 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 da. try me again. Okay, here we go. All right, Phil, what do we got, buddy? All right, you got me. No, nope, it's no. Nope, uh, all right. Yeah, I Seriously. got you, but it sounds horrible. So okay. that's okay. All right, I'll read what he said. Uh, he said uh, it's a hundred dollars for a week pass. Uh, over at Bayside Bowl, Dwight for uh the event. Hundred dollars? That's cheap. Cheap. Ten to fifteen percent of crowd from out of town, which isn't that much. Plus, there's 300 plus people in the building. Woo -wee. Yeah. And again, that building probably isn't all that small. They've added all that all that different stuff onto it. It was small. And then he had that big addition and so forth. But 300 people is a lot of people uh, to put in a Bayside Bowl. All right. What else do you got, uh, Dwight? Anything else? Yeah, I thought of you right away uh, when B.J. Moore was constantly being mentioned and he had a great uh, PBA league. Um, the comments of like when he was in town and the, and the news did a, a article on who's yep. BJ Moore. Uh, he had a really good uh, going, right? Correct. He really threw it. Well, great weekend for him. But why are we putting BJ Moore on TV? <laughs> Randy Peterson loves his game. You have superstars, right? At your, every one of them are there. I just thought of you one, but, 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 but <laughs> BJ Moore, right? You have Kyle Troop. You have Jason Belmonte. Yes. Hell, I'll go with Parker Bone, Norm Duke, Tackett. Wes Malott, EJ Tackett. Yes. Uh, uh, Nuke Bomb. Yeah. Put him out there. I agree. I agree. BJ Moore? That's the guy you go with? I mean. Great I, PBA league, though. Yeah, I'm fine. Great. Good. But again, I go back to who is making the decisions of putting who out there. Unless there's a tie-in, right? Is BJ Moore married to somebody from Portland, Maine? Does BJ Moore have family that live in Portland, Maine? Does BJ Moore work part-time at Bowling Habit? Right. Like, is there a tie-in to Portland, Maine that I don't know about? Because if there's not, that's not who I'm putting out there on TV. Right. And BJ Moore, I'm sure you're a great guy, but I'm trying to get people yes. the stars of right. my sport yeah. is who I want out in front of the TV. Anthony Simonson. Correct. Yes, another yes. one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You That's went like who the we top want. five. Yes. Uh, Correct. Marshall Holman. Put the Hall of the legendary Hall of Famer Marshall Holman in front of a mic. He'll yes. be good. Not gonna worry about Marshall being in front of a mic. Let him go out there and be an ambassador. Final note I had was uh during earlier in the year, we were talking about where the teams were going to finish. Uh, we did a whole show on that. We're getting ready for the PBA league. I did not pick the lumberjacks. Yeah, I didn't. I did not. Uh, I, I don't believe I even had the top five uh, of Waco wonders. 
Um, but Phil made a comment, and that's why I was going to tell Phil he was 100% right. He's listening. Needs lefties out there. Lefties yes. are going to take the advantage. They're going to be the, the difference. Um, and he was 100% correct. Yeah, he um, was. Look at what Graham Fodd did. I oh, mean, he if was Graham Fodd's team would have won, he would have been MVP. Yes. He, he struck every shot. Yes, he was and, a monster. And again, he's the rookie. He's yep. that X factor again. You know, then you, then on the other hand, you have DJ Archer, which replaced Bill O'Neill. Awful. Look, right. Look how bad he struggled. So, God, yeah. Awful. So uh, Phil was 100% correct about the lefty advantage uh, out there. And it showed. When you have back-to-back -back, uh, Parker and the Simonelli, I mean, that roster was laid out absolutely perfect four and five yeah uh, position so it, phil was correct on that one no doubt waco wonders waco wonders yeah. that's crazy i know i didn't yep. pick him hey no doubt no chance nope. i picked him all right that'll do it for another edition of the spare time bowling show he's dwight albrecht spare time pro shop follow him on twitter at dewey 300 our guy phil brylo at brew city bowling two dollar phil you can follow me at sparky radio also go and forget go check out 1250 amthefan.com uh, if you are a fan of Wisconsin sports teams, do weekly interviews with different people. Tim Dillard, the Valley Sports Wisconsin Brewers analyst, have him on uh, and interview him every Tuesday. Uh, if you're a big Brewers baseball fans, we get ready for the playoffs to start here. Do a lot of different Packer interviews, including Eli Berkovitz from Packer Report. Had him on talking about the Packers getting embarrassed by the Detroit Lions. So we have that on as well. Uh, and next week, we may have a tree expert on to talk about a tree falling <laughs> on Dwight's house that we didn't have time to get to this week. That, that I don't know what a but, mess. But you stayed away from the down power lines. Yes, I stayed so from away from the You didn't try to cut line. the grass around the power lines. No, I so did not. That's, that's why I'm still here. See, he <laughs> learned something, folks. We're getting to him. All right, that'll do it for another edition of the Spirit Time Bowling Show. Have a good one, y'all. Toodles.